Well, the day has finally come. There's a little bit of prep work left to do. We've got to pull the batteries, pull a DEF tank, mask off a bunch of stuff, and let's get painting. Pulling the batteries will allow me to paint the frame behind them as well as a battery support tray which you may remember from a previous video had quite a bit of rust. While I'm removing parts, Krista is starting to tape the pieces that won't get removed like the ABS sensor plugs, brake hoses and fuel lines. I've decided not to pull the fuel tank and all the plumbing so there is a fair bit of taping that needs to be done. I'm also pulling the DEF tank to paint the frame behind it as I plan on relocating the DEF tank to between the chassis rails. I'll remove and or relocate as many of the wiring harnesses as I can so they're not in the way and all of the securing clips have been removed as well. I'm using some clear plastic garbage bags to protect the back of the engine, transmission and exhaust system from overspray. There really isn't much overspray but these components are pretty close to where I'm painting so there's bound to be some. Next I need to take the wheels off so I can paint the brake drums and hubs and also have better access to the suspension and not have to worry about overspray on the rims or tires. Well I believe I've got everything ready to go. We should have pretty much everything taped up. I've got a new desk and dryer on my paint gun. Got my gloves ready, my filters ready, long sleeves. And I think the only thing left to do is fire up the compressor. I've drained the tank out of all the moisture. Fire up the compressor, hook it up to the desk and dryer over here, mix up some paint and put it on. The final step for me is wiping down the chassis with the S8 reducer just to get any little bits that the degreaser didn't get. Here's an old can of chassis saver that didn't store too well, so let's start over with a new one. One important note for magnet paints is that you shouldn't shake chassis saver to mix it, only stir it and stir it well. Really well. The S8 reducer is a solvent, so it's really important that you wear a respirator and have good airflow. My shop door is open and my fans are on, so it's pushing the air down and out the door. Once you've poured the chassis saver into the can, a really important note from chassis saver is before replacing the lid on the can, which you want to do right away, put a layer of saran wrap in between because trust me, this stuff will glue the lid on and you will not be able to remove it. The metal will tear before the paint comes apart. I'm going to be thinning the chassis saver about 10%, so I've got 10 ounces of paint in here and I'll add about 1 ounce of S8 reducer. And of course I forgot, but it says to put a small amount of the S8 reducer on top of the chassis saver before you put the lid back on, and this helps prevent the top layer of paint from curing while it's in the can and it'll let your can last a little bit longer. It does take quite a bit of stirring to get this reducer to mix in, but you want to keep stirring from bottom to top until you get to about the consistency of milk. I'm using my larger HVLP gun this time, mainly because it holds more paint. It will be a bit more difficult to get into some of the tight spaces though. I'm starting by spraying the insides of the chassis rails so that I'm not leaning over wet paint on the outsides and the top. Sitting underneath the truck and between the frame rails allows me to get a decent upward angle and get the underside of the channels and the underside of things like the drive shaft and hanger bracket. Doesn't make for as good a video though, does it? As you can see, there isn't much overspray. Actually, there isn't much spray at all. As it turned out after a long struggle, I found out that the paint gun was not working properly and I just couldn't get a very big spray pattern. The longer I painted, the smaller the pattern got and no matter how much of what I adjusted, it didn't get any better. Eventually I switched to my touch-up gun with the much smaller hopper and man what a difference! I was painting 10 times faster, though it was cranked up significantly and there was more overspray. Magnet Paints recommends multiple light coats as opposed to heavy coats, so by the time I was done getting the first coat on, I was able to start a second coat.
Overall, other than the initial paint gun not performing, I think it came out quite well and it's most definitely an improvement over what it was before. There will be a few spots that I need to touch up, like where the jack stands are, but I can easily do that later. The main goal was to get the areas that won't be accessible once the subframe and camper are on. All that's left now is to put some cleaner in the paint gun and wipe everything down. I find that spraying reducer into a paper towel and then using that to wipe the gun off works quite well. It cleans the inside and outside of the gun at the same time, and you don't need to keep dumping reducer or gun wash into a paper towel, you just spray a bit more. All that's left now is to let it dry for 24 hours. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a like. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, throw a comment down below, and share this video if you think it will help someone. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't forget to come back next time.